welcome back knitters. Can you believe this is block 17 already of Nora's Vintage Afghan, where we've been knitting one block a month for the last 17 months, and we are in the home stretch. I can't believe there's only three left after this. So block 17 is really pretty straightforward, although I did find it to be a little bit tedious. It kind of reminded me of block two, where you just kind of need to muscle through it. Um, I love how it looks, but it, I, I found it a little bit tedious. So um, it's not as straightforward as I originally thought because it's not just a just a three over three cable. There are some other uh, some other maneuvering is involved, so that's kind of what made it more tedious. Anyway, if you're just joining us, you can knit these blocks in any order you like. Download the pattern. I have the link down below. Join us. It's a fantastic knit along, and all of the blocks are on the Nora's Vintage Afghan playlist. Link down below. Before we get started, I want to welcome my two newest patrons, Renee Cusisto and Kimberly Seacrest. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Without you, we wouldn't be able to bring these videos to you each and every week. If you'd like to learn how to become a patron, head on over to patreon.com forward slash pearl together, and you can see what I'm offering in trade for your monthly support. There are various benefits available to you as patrons that are not available to the general public. So check out, check that out when you get a moment. All right, let's get started with block 17. Okay, as with past blocks, we've just done the four rows of garter stitch here. Row five was knit one purl, one knit one all the way across. Row six through nine is again, knit each row, which creates that garter stitch section. So now we're on the increase row and the instructions indicate that we're going to knit one, make one three times. So this increase row seems to be a little bit different. So knit one, and I'm, when I make one, I'm gonna lift this bar right here and knit into the back of it, knit into that back loop, and that closes that. I'll show you that again. When I do, when I do the lifted bar increase like that, I take this bar and I go and grab it with my left needle. That's probably not what I did the first time. But then it looks like a regular knit stitch with the leg forward. But if I knit into that, it's gonna make a hole. So I'm gonna knit into the back of that and twist it to, to close the hole. So again, you're gonna go in and pick up that bar, knit into the back, and if your needles are not as pointy as mine, you can just go in the front, kind of roll things around and get your needle into the back portion of that stitch that way. Okay, so knit one, make one three times. Then I'm gonna knit one, make one, knit two, make one 17 times until we get to the knit one, make one three times again and knit two. So for when we're done with all this, we'll have 99 stitches. So rather than counting the 17 times of this sequence here, where it says knit one, make one, knit two, make one. Okay, let me move this up. Rather than counting that 17 times, I always like to look at this and think, okay, I've got knit one, make one three times. That's gonna be three stitches worth, be, not counting the make one increases on the bars. So that's three stitches, four, five. So I'm gonna do this sequence until I have a total of five stitches left on my needle, then I'll perform this last bit here. That way I don't have to count the 17 times. Okay, I finished the increase row and I have in fact double counted that I do have 99 stitches. So that increase row is a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past. And now we're gonna begin our chart using the first part, this is going to be row one, and we're used to seeing row one with the tail, but this is actually going to be the wrong side row of the chart. So let's take a look at some chart notes. We're starting on the wrong side row. So row one is the wrong side. So we're beginning at D, working across to the right, repeating what's between the red lines and ending with the section between B and A. Then row two will begin on the right side, work across from A to B, repeat the section between these lines, between B and C, and then end between C and D. So you're just repeating what's inside the red lines however many times you need to until you have these nine stitches left on either, well, on this end it's nine stitches and here that appears to be six. So we are starting on the wrong side row, which is row one, and this is knit the knits, purl the purls, but we're gonna start off by knitting these three, purling, knitting, purling, and we're just gonna do that across. So work through this ribbing, taking note that we're gonna have the garter stitch edge here that alternates knits and purls up each side of your block, and we'll catch up with you again when I get to the green symbol here. Okay, I've worked across row four to the point at which we're going to undertake the green 
the instructions for that green symbol. So it says slip six stitches to the cable needle. Easy enough. Uh, these are cable needles. These are little wooden cable needles that come in a three pack. I put the link down below where I got them. They're made by Brittany and I like them because they're lightweight. They're a little bit tapered into the center and they just work really well. So then it says, so there's my six stitches slipped to the cable needle and held in back. And then we're going to knit three. Okay, easy enough. And I kind of poke that in so, you know, I don't want it to pucker forward. I like to poke it so that it's pleated downward and in. Since we're going across three, a span of six stitches and we're going to have quite a little hole right underneath here, I give that a good little tuck, tug and tighten, tighten that up. You want to tighten up the second one as well because we don't want there to be a huge gap or a ladder between the stitches here and what we're drawing across. All right. So we've knitted those three and now we're going to slip the leftmost three stitches from the cable needle. So the three that we put on last, we're going to put those back onto the left hand working needle. So we're going to put these three back over. Whoops, being careful not to lose anything here. There we go. I'm holding this down with my thumb. I almost lost some of those stitches off the right hand needle. Okay, so we put those three stitches back on the left side. Get our working yarn back together here. And we're going to purl those in keeping with what we have going here with knit three, purl three, knit three, purl three. So we're purling those three. Then my guess is we're going to knit the three from the cable needle. Yep, that's correct. I just took a glance at the instructions. Now we're going to knit the three off of the cable needle. So basically we're just rearranging some stuff. But obviously you would have some trouble doing this without a cable needle. So I'm not even going to attempt it. There, I got a hold of that. I'm not even going to try to do this switcheroo with a cable, without a cable needle. All right, so we've done that. And then we're going to repeat what's inside those red lines. We're going to repeat the 12 stitches between the red lines until we get to where we only have nine stitches left. So we're going to repeat that a few more times. All right, let's go over that one more time and then you can carry on. Now that looks really tight and there is a gap right there, but that will loosen up in subsequent rows. That's also why there is several knitted rows between your cable maneuvers and then the next cable. That's why there's five straight up rib ribbing rows between this maneuver and what comes next in row 10. So let's go over that again. You're going to slip six to the cable needle and hold it in the back. Three, four, five, slip. And I, you'll notice I'm always slipping those off as if to purl. Hold those in the back, knit the next three, being careful to, you know, give that a good little tug and tighten that up. And if you notice, I just push that down out of the way with my left index finger just to keep it out of my way while, while I'm knitting those three. Then we're going to take the three last stitches that we put on the cable needle and put them back over to the left so that we can work them. All right, we're going to purl those and you can remember that because they are purled already. So that's in keeping with what we've been doing. Purl those just kind of ignoring the flopping around of the cable needle there. And then we're going to knit be sure that's not twisted. Like, you know, if that flops over, make sure it's straightened back up before you pull it across the back and knit those stitches off of your cable needle. So we're going to just continue doing that all the way across and then go ahead and work the next several rows until we get to row, row 10 and we'll take a look at what the blue symbols are all about. Okay, I'm on row 17 and I've just, uh, knit and purled the first three stitches there. And now we're up to the blue symbols. So we're going to slip again, we're going to slip six stitches onto the cable needle. And this time we're going to hold them to the front, but it's going to be the same premise as before, where we're going to hold those to the front and then knit the next three. Then we're going to again, slip the left, most stitches from the cable needle back over here to the left working needle and purl those. Whoops, there we go. OK, 
Okay, leave these hanging out here. Purl those because they are purl stitches anyway. You just kind of have to, you can hold that down with your thumb. You just kind of have to look beyond the cable needle and just focus on the stitches that you're actually working so you, those aren't in your way. Then we're just going to knit those three from the cable needle. So you can either put those back over to the left or you can pull this across and knit them right off. I guess I just kind of like to put them back over so that's one less needle in my field of view, in my vision. So I put them back over and then just work them off that way. But you do whatever you'd like. If you that's one more step and you don't need to do that or you don't care to do that, that's totally fine. Okay, then we're going to purl the three in the middle and do the whole thing again. So I'll show you that maneuver one more time and then it's just going to be a matter of working through the chart. But you can see how that's going to cross over what we did earlier. So again, we're putting six stitches off on the cable needle, slipping those always tip to tip or slipping as if to purl. Hold those to the front. Knit the next three from your working needle. And again, I make sure that I tighten up I tighten up my working yarn, especially with the second stitch, to try to close that gap, minimize the gap that we have going on there. Okay, why was that only two? Did I drop one? Oh, look what I did. I put seven stitches off. I was talking and not paying attention, and I put an extra off on the cable needle. So I'm glad I realized that now instead of later. Okay, so again, just tighten, tighten up your yarn there so you minimize whatever hole you're going to have between here by rearranging six stitches. So again, I give that another good little tug and again on the third one I will as also. Then we're going to take these purl stitches back over to the left and work those as purls. Then pull across the remaining three stitches here. Now again, you can go over like this and just knit them right off your cable needle. Um, I like to just put them back over to the left. Straighten everything out. There we go. I just prefer to do it that way. I don't like to get that cable needle out of my view as soon as I can. So and I can also check the tension as I'm going along. So there we go. So that's gonna that's gonna look kind of cool. So carry on doing that. We're going to repeat those charts and I'll knit about halfway through mine and show you what it looks like in a bit. Okay, I've completed three of the chart repeats and I like how it's looking kind of like that lattice. That's kind of neat. Um, obviously, it'll look better when it's blocked, but I have three more chart repeats to go and then we'll be finishing up. Okay, block 17 is coming along. I finished the chart. Now what I need to do is decrease these 99 stitches back down to 59. So if you'll notice in the, the notes, it says we're going to knit one, knit two together three times, and then a whole bunch more decreases. Okay, so on our decrease row, we're just going to do a series of knit two together. So be sure to just consult that. It's really straightforward. Then we're, gonna re we're, then we're just going to repeat rows one through nine, same as we did in the beginning. Bind off and block it and soak it. So by now, you guys are familiar with how we're going to do all that. So when we come back in just a few minutes, I'll show you what the finished square looks like. Okay, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please click that thumbs up button down below. Click subscribe, share with your friends, leave a comment. All those things are super helpful. Thanks for watching.